Okay, so this is something we've already talked about. If you have negative with the base part of it. So this is with uh, the base, when your base is dealing with negatives. Okay, so on this one, do you understand that five is a base? And negative one is really a coefficient. Do you see that? Five is getting squared, and then there's an afterthought of negative. This is what's mathematically happening. There's a negative one out front, but I have to think five times five, then multiply. Bed mass, do your exponent and then multiply. Okay, so then it would be negative 25. This question is different because now negative 5 is the base. There is no coefficient. So do you see how that's different? Almost looks the same, but different. So this question would look like this, which would be a positive 25. Okay, so that's when you're dealing with negatives in a base. Now, this next part is us doing negatives on exponents. Okay, so here's the rule. If you have a base to a negative exponent, you put it to the other location of a fraction, and then you can make it positive. Okay? So, 4 to the negative 2 would become 1 over 4 squared. So I moved it 4. That part was really on a top of a fraction, so now I moved it to a bottom, which makes 1 16th. Okay, something to a negative exponent. So now I'm going to move it to the bottom of the fraction, where now I can turn it into a positive. So this is 1 over 27. Okay, get me the next answer on your own. Okay, so 1 over 49. Next one. So here's my fraction. 2 to a negative 2. That's got a negative with it, so it's going to have to move. So it's going to go to the bottom. Five to a negative 2. That has a negative exponent, so it's going to have to move. So if it's on the bottom, where should I move it? To the top. Okay, so this one has a negative exponent, so it's going to have to move. So if you move it, it will go to the top. And just become 36.
Okay, eight's the negative two, that's negative, so it's gonna have to do a move. So if it's on the top, it will move to the bottom. Now it's eight squared. And two squared, wait, that's not negative. So what should I do? I should just completely leave it there. Okay, I tried to kind of trick you now. Do you understand it doesn't move? There's no negative, so don't move it. Okay, so this looks weird. How should I complete this fraction? You can't just write a fraction with a nothing like this on the top. So you would write a one. Okay, now we're gonna go through each thing. There's three items here, one, two, three items. Okay, you're gonna have to decide, are they gonna stay in their position or are they gonna be moving? That's what you're thinking. So two, did you pick stay for it? Three to the negative two, should that stay or should it move? Move. So on the bottom, three squared. Five to a negative two, should I leave it there or should I move it? Move. So with all these multipliers, if you move it, do you see how I'm multiplying there? Okay, and then evaluate it. Give me what you can simplify the most on that. Okay, we've actually kind of done something like this before. Um, the zero rule. We knew that anything to the zero equals one. If we do a division rule on this, the base is seven, and then you would subtract your exponents. So thus, I should be able to conclude that everything like that would equal, would equal one. Okay, so also proving what we just learned today Okay, so if we know anything to the zero is one, and we know seven squared is 49, so it equals one over 49. Okay, now, can you do the division rule? So the base of seven, I need you to subtract your exponent. So what's zero subtract to? Negative two. What did we just learn today? Now do you understand why that rule is working? Okay, I'm not just making it up. You can see how playing this out works to be a fraction.